Normally when I review a Linux distribution, I spend a day or two playing around with it in VirtualBox, or sometimes on occasion I've played around with it during its development, so I've got a fair idea of how it works when final release happens. But with KDE Neon, I've done it a little bit differently. I've been using it for over a month now, as my main system. Yes, my day-to-day -day system has been KDE Neon. So, what is KDE Neon? So it's based on Ubuntu 16.04, so they've got a nice, solid, long-term support release base for the system. And then they've got their own repository, providing the latest KDE and Plasma updates. So currently, they are now on KDE Plasma 5.7.4, which was released just over a week ago. Now, I've been a bit slow at doing this video. I mean, very slow, actually, and very slow at running the updates in this virtual machine here and my main system. But anyway, what I want to say is they got the updates out in their repository within a few days of Plasma 5.7.4 being formally released. They've kept well on top of the updates, so you are getting a bleeding edge desktop. What I have seen, they've got a large number of updates, so we have 404 updates selected. So I did a fresh install from the July distro, I think it was, so the July release, and this is the I've forgotten the term off the top of my head, but they've got like is it a consumer version and a developer version. So this is more the consumer version. As you can see, we've got the updates to 5.7.4, basically noted on most things there, and the latest version of Firefox. The byte value is off there on the moon discover. Okay, minor point really. In terms of the number of crashes or glitches that I've had while using the system, there's only been a couple really. The first was with the top panel. It the contents of it just literally ups and vanished. Now I had this similar problem in Kubuntu, but, but whereas in Kubuntu, once gone, they stayed gone, in KD Neon, they came back a few minutes later, indicating that a lot of progress has been made within KDE, and that certainly being on the bleeding edge has kind of helped. I've not had anywhere near the number of crashes I had with Kubuntu, which is almost on a day-to-day -day basis it would crash. The other couple of problems I've had within KD Neon have been a lot more minor, have been more located with specific applications. One has been KDN Live, the video editor that I use. I'm working with the developers at the moment to try and solve the problem. And the final application which I've had a crash on has been the Dark Places engine, playing the original Quake 1 with the modernised map that came out like 20 years after the original. So the map has come out post the game and post Dark Places engine. And it crashed before when I was running Kubuntu 1404. So that's really nothing to do with KDE Neon. So all the updates are finished now, so we're going to take a look at this system. I don't normally use the Moon Update Manager, but I noticed there's this new animated sequence here at the top. Okay, let's close that and look around at this system. When I say it is a minimal system, I'm really not joking. There is very little installed on here. We'll just take a quick look around. So internet, we have a web browser, that is Firefox. Multimedia, we have VLC. Settings, just got the system settings. System, we'll open system monitor to see what it's doing under system usage. So memory, 359 meg of RAM out of four gig. Is this a KDE desktop or X-Face? Huh, that is very low. I dare say that it is a lot lower than Unity or GNOME. K okay, info center. You can see we now have Plasma 5.7.4. Excellent, as per the update. Utilities. Again, very minimal. Text editor that we have is K right. And they've set the scroll bar style to be the preview of the text. You can't see anything now because it is a blank text file here. We do need a bit of terminal usage to get the system up and running. So I'm going to install Moon Package Manager. I suppose I could have just used the Moon Discover rather than using the Package Manager. No, I just kind of want to get a bit more detail here. So on the bottom right hand side of the screen we've got the Network Manager, Clipboard Contents, Audio Volume, Time and Calendar, and that's the Hamburger or equivalent of Cashew for editing the widgets, the panels and the desktop. Ah oh, good, Moon has installed. I can search for it. The searcher is really snappy and responsive, but we can also change style by right-clicking, going to alternatives, and selecting well, we've got the application dashboard. 
It is my preferred option. Moon. Yep. So I'm going to try and install LibreOffice. Now you think, how complicated can it be? Uh, very. So LibreOffice. Mm, okay, we'll take the meta package. Let's keep it simple. So upon running LibreOffice Writer, you can see it does at least look presentable here. Nothing wrong at all with the theming. Well, it's pulled in the GTK theme by default, but it does look a lot better than the KDE themed version of LibreOffice. Now, I don't know why. But one thing we'll find that is missing is there's no underlining when you make a typo. So there's no dictionary installed. This is not something you normally have to contend with on most Ubuntu-based distros, that it does pull in a dictionary for you. Okay, so it's a bit more work here in KDE Neon. So what I used before was the Hunspell dictionary. Hunspell EN. Uh, yeah, close enough, ENGB. So install that, mark for installation. And I'll make sure I've got the language pack for LibreOffice, because that didn't get installed. Now when I make a spelling mistake, we can see the red underlining. If we right-click on it, we get the alternate spelling options. Hello. So you can see on the application dashboard we have favourites and applications, as well as the searcher here. If you want to put applications into your favourites, you can right-click on them, then go to Add to Favourites. And if you don't want them there, right-click on the application again, and remove from favourites. We have shut down, reboot and log out here, but if you go over to Power Session, you can get some further options of suspending and switching user. Opening up Dolphin File Manager, which I have to say is probably one of the best file managers for any system. And it's kind of zoomed out a little bit here, so I can just change that to Configure Dolphin, View Modes, I'll just make it a little bit bigger. Now just some of the features in Dolphin, you can have custom views between different folders. So if I open up Pictures folder, you can see I've got an iconified view. You can change between the views by pressing Control 1, 2 or 3, or selecting from the icons up there. There's an equivalent of Tap to Highlight here. If you hover over the icon, you can see you've got this green plus sign. If I click that, it highlights that specific icon. It's the equivalent of holding down Control and left clicking which incidentally I can do as well. That's a nice feature and not something I've seen in another desktop file manager. Some other features of Dolphin, you've got a split screen and you can open up Terminal as well. So yeah, it's a really good file manager. Probably one of the main reasons that I stick to KDE to get the best native version of Dolphin. A last look at some of the other features, if you go to System Settings, we have the options of changing the workspace theme. There's an easy option here to switch between a light and dark theme. There's further options for colouring specific components. The application style, and you can download new styles quite easily. If we go on to get new decorations here, and it takes you across to the KDE Look website where you can download and install different themes really easily. So just click on install. There you are, you can see this new decoration. If you're not exactly sure where something is, you can search for it. For example, double click. Look, it's even suggested different options as well. So, yeah, so double click. Oh, it's under input devices. It's still a bit of a guessing game where it is afterwards, but at least it puts you in the right area. So yeah, single or double clicking for navigation. That was what I was after. I've done a more in-depth video before on KDE Connect, but it's an application to synchronise with your Android phone, and one of the features of it is that if you're playing a music file on any media player here in KDE, and you receive a phone call, well it pauses the song and lets you answer the phone, and when you end the call, it resumes the song. Nice little feature, that. There's so much more I could talk about in KDE Neon, but I wanted to give you an overview of the system. It's very minimal, and you get the latest bleeding edge KDE desktop. Do I like it? I certainly do, and I'm going to stay with it.